ba da 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 the best things in life are free. ba da 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 But you can give them to the birds and bees. I want money. That's a song. I don't want money. Well, I do. <laughs> Not from you. The best things in life are free, is my point. Just like every single game in this video today. 10 of the best free games on Switch. Of the best. I want to stress that part because I've made three of these videos in the past. Talking about everything from Fortnite to other free games. You're about to see a bunch of games that you can download and play right now for free. Well, for most of them. Some of them do harass you and try and get money out of you, but just don't do it. Hey, if this video helps you, if you enjoy free games, who doesn't? Like the video, subscribe, comment, and check out the sponsor of today's video. But we'll get to that. Let's start with game number one. All right, so I know I said Fortnite wasn't in this video, but it kind of technically, maybe not really, but it is. Super Animal Royale. This is one of those games I had no idea was on the Switch or even what it was, but it is essentially what would happen if you took Fortnite, made it 2D isometric and filled with cutesy woodland creatures and then you know, gave them weapons. If you've played Fortnite, you know what to expect here. You party on up with a bunch of friends or randoms or just fly solo, pile on into the match, and when you're ready, jump on out of that eagle and find somewhere safe to land. Scrounge for whatever weapons and ammo you can find, and then start surviving. The coolest part, in my opinion, is that it actually plays like a twin stick shooter. You move with the left stick and then use the right stick to aim. The terrible part is everybody is cracked. I don't know what it is about Super Animal Royale, but I can barely stay alive for more than a few moments before getting destroyed. That said, I do manage to have some fun around that. You can get into these little hamster balls, and if you squish someone, it's an instant KO. That's very satisfying. You got your regular flair with a free to play game, your battle pass, your cosmetics, but I prefer this over a pay to win mechanic. I think Super Animal Royale is cute and has a ton of charm. It's actually really fun to play and maybe you should check it out. It is brutally hard though. I don't understand how everyone is this good. This video is sponsored by Tokyo Treat and Sakrako. Tokyo Treat time! This way, buddy! So if you like traditional Japanese treats, you can try Sakrako. Or if you enjoy more popular Japanese snacks, let's have a look at Tokyo treat first. Banana caramel Kit Kats. Pringles. There's like a picture of a soup. Are they soup flavored? What do they smell like? Like Pringles. <laughs> so Tokyo Treat is the box filled with the more popular snacks. Hence your Pringles, Kit Kats, marshmallow gummies. Yes, exactly. It's a monthly Japanese snack subscription box and you'll get up to 20 of the latest, most exclusive, limited edition and seasonal flavored Japanese snacks that are only available in Japan for a limited time. So unlike Nintendo, those delisted games, these snacks aren't going anywhere except in your mouth. Apparently the Sakura candy and the loaf is made specifically for the Tokyo Treat Box. And then in the Sakuko Box, we have an exclusive Sakura Sencha tea and a ton of matcha themed snacks. Oh, so true, me. So in the Sakuko Box, you'll get 20 traditional and authentic artisan Japanese snacks. Getting either of these fantastic boxes directly supports the channel. If there's links down below to both, and if you use code BEAT'EMUPS, you'll get $5 off either box. Okay, back to the video. Okay, now back to the video. You heard of Rocket League, right? In the past, when I've made these free-to-play videos, I've never mentioned Rocket League because in the past, it wasn't free. Sucks to be you if you spent $60 on the physical copy like I did. If you somehow have never seen or heard of Rocket League, it's a very simple concept. Soccer with remote controlled cars. It's so simple, it doesn't even sound good, but it is unbelievably fun and easy for anyone to pick up and play and start having a blast. You control these little cars by boosting around the map and doing jumps and flips to try and either block the ball from going into your goal or of course, getting that satisfying goal. That's what they say in soccer, right? I don't watch sports. Also, I had forgot this, but apparently at some point I'd spent money on the Back to the Future 
DeLorean, and when I logged in to record footage for this game, I was pleasantly surprised to find it still there waiting for me. I did have a problem getting into a game with people. Everyone kept dropping out and leaving me with bots. I don't know if it was just the time of night I was playing or the fact that I scored nine goals for my team and everyone had just had enough of me. But then again, I was playing against bots because everyone had left. I feel like I don't really have to say much more. I really do believe most people know what this game is. I just think that a lot of people don't realize it went free to play. Probably because when you walk in a GameStop, it's still on the shelves for you to buy. Don't do that. I, it's free now. You ever see or play a game that instantly makes you feel like 80 years old? That was me this week when I discovered Trove. Apparently this one's been on the Switch for a while, but I always passed it by and didn't notice it. It wasn't until I picked it up to start playing to see if it was worthy of being in the video, I realized it's actually pretty fun. I felt old because as soon as I started, I was completely clueless as to what to do. It looked like Roblox mixed with Minecraft and it gave me no direction at at all. Eventually, I figured out I was supposed to talk to little Hubert over here, and then he gave me a quest to go to the snow biome and start doing dungeons. By the way, there's a ton of different biomes and just thousands, seemingly, of dungeons scattered around for you to explore. As you start roaming the world completing quests, you'll find just an insane amount of loot to start leveling up your character and class. I was instantly impressed by how much meat this game has. 15 different class types, each with their own weapons and abilities, so much loot to find with all these different rarity ratings and ways to upgrade yourself in the game. There were legitimately players playing everywhere and you can touch this weird thing in each area and it'll zip you to an active group of players if you want to find some people playing and dungeoning together and just join up with their crew, which I really liked. And just be careful with the online chat. I was playing for maybe five minutes tonight on stream and the chat had some less than pleasant things to say. But the more I started to play, I realized this game is kind of like a MMORPG version of Dragon Quest Builders. And another thing I really appreciate is you don't have to spend any money on the game. You can, you can buy things like extra mounts or cosmetics, but there is so much content in the game and it's all completely free from start to finish. In fact, the game rewards you for exploring and just playing more. And know what it looks like. It looks like it might be better suited for a younger crowd. And you might even be looking at it right now and thinking, I would never touch that. I gotta tell you, I thought the same thing. And then I started playing it and I felt the addiction creeping in and I had to stop. So maybe give it a shot. Yeah, I get you. You're a rough and tough 30 something year old. You don't want all these colors and little baby games. You want something gritty, something you can really sink your teeth into. How about tank? How about big honking metal tanks blasting each other on the battlefield? My last job, I don't even know, like 10 years ago, I had a friend who was obsessed with World of Tanks. Well, if you're just like my old friend from Budding's Warehouse, you might enjoy World of Tanks Blitz. World of Tanks Blitz is, I assume, like World of Tanks, but a more portable and action, fast-paced, friendly version. You go online, you find four other tank teammates, and you verse another team of five, and you just blast each other until you're the last tank remaining. There's modes like all out skirmishes or capture the flag. And of course, the more you play, the more you can upgrade your tank and the better weapons, armor and all of that jazz. That's really all there is to this game. If I'm being honest, you're a tank and you shoot other tanks. There's a lot of strategy behind the battles and the more I played online, the more I started to understand why people enjoy this game. I'm just not a big fan of tanks. Let's move on to something I actually had a ton of fun with. The game is called, I think, Cursed Fode? I gotta say though, it looks like complete trash doo-doo. I had a look at this game on other consoles and it actually looks pretty good. It's graphically intense, so I can see why it had to be scaled down so much to work on Switch. They obviously prioritize frame rates, and I can appreciate that. The game runs really smooth. It just looks bad. Now that we've got that horrible, ugly elephant out of the room, let's talk about the actual game. It is similar to Fortnite. It's closer to something like PUBG. You pick the character you want to play, and then you just get slapped into the map. There's no battle bus or eagle or anything. You're just kind of there. In fact, you're not even really there. You have to load in first. That's how badly optimized this game is. Every single game loads you in this slowly. But once you're in, that's when the fun starts. You start scavenging around 
on armor, food, weapons, jetpacks, you name it. Once you're all geared up and ready for battle, well, you'll probably just keep looting because that's all you really do in these games is loot, loot, loot until the end. If you're the last person surviving, you win. And I actually won one of the first games I played in style, I might add. I found a sniper and the game is super responsive. It has gyro controls and I sat up in a little tower and just started picking off my enemies like fish in a barrel. But there's some other things that make the game unique and interesting. Every character has their own special ability, like this one guy who goes ghost mode and can just zip around unseen until he's ready to pop out and start firing. And then tonight on stream, I played as another character who can dash around super fast. Also while playing, other players were activating these special effects that were affecting everyone on the map, like running with super speed or even being able to fly. It's a really fun take on the Battle Royale series. It's just very janky, very ugly. If you can look past all of that, there isn't many shooters on the Switch, and this one's really easy to get into games with friends and just start having fun. I debated putting two card games on the list, but I ultimately decided to because both of them have been flying under my radar and they're both filled with content and pretty good. The first one is Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel. This might be the best version of a Yu-Gi-Oh! game I have personally played for a lot of reasons. Building your own deck is actually pretty easy for one and I appreciate that. There's an extensive offline campaign that just seems to keep going. It's filled with practice battles to help you learn but also mock battles that are completely random and it's up to you to try and take what you've learned and beat the NPC AI. Every time you complete a section, you get a ton of free gem things, which you can use to get card packs to help start building a deck. You can even go and copy other decks that you like, and then whatever cards you don't have, you can scrap extra cards or cards you don't want and turn them into the cards that you do. So if you go through and play all the offline stuff, you can pretty easily build whatever deck you want to build, and then take it to the online play. There's one more thing I love about the game and one that I don't love so much. Whenever you try and take a physical game like this and turn it digital, it's easy to mess it up. Between all the main phases and battle phases and all the different techniques and ways you can play cards and use cards, it can be very hard to create that game in a way that makes sense to the player and actually informs the player with everything that they can do at any given time. But this game does that in a great way. It's all very easily laid out. Everything you can do on a turn is highlighted. You add that with a ton of cool special effects and animations and transitions all things that kind of flesh out the world and make it feel more like an active battlefield. There are a lot of nice touches. The thing I don't like is because the game of Yu-Gi-Oh is so convoluted and confusing and because there are so many different things that can happen in any game type. When you go online, it's just a free-for-all of I don't know what's happening and a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh decks now one turn kill. And almost every game I played online, when it got to the opponent's turn, they spent 10 minutes doing some stuff and before I knew it, the game was over. I used to play Yu-Gi-Oh! when I was in high school. All my friends and I did, but we stopped because at some point, the game just got too ridiculous. The creators of Yu-Gi-Oh! clearly didn't care what kind of cards they added to completely break the game, and it just became beyond my comprehension at some point. So what I'm saying is the actual game of Yu-Gi-Oh! itself at its core is broken. But this way of playing Yu-Gi-Oh! if you love Yu-Gi-Oh! or just want to go through the offline, is a ton of fun and done really well. That's why I wanted to add a second card game in the list because I found a game I wish I had found sooner and that's Eternal the Card Game. Apparently created by someone who was a lead at Magic the Gathering. And if you look at this game, it reminds me so much of Hearthstone, another card game I love. I actually really, really, really like card games. I have always wondered why Hearthstone wasn't on Switch and I wish I knew that this has been sitting here the whole time. Eternal is fully fleshed out. It has full voice action acting for every single card. Great art. The board and the cards all have unique effects. It is simple to learn and easy to build custom decks. There's even a bunch of offline modes as well, like campaigns, and there's four unique game modes as well as the online play. Again, it's very much like Hearthstone. In fact, if you look at that and look at that, I, I mean, which is which? I mean, if you 
if you played either game, you might know, but they're very similar in the way that they're structured. But there is enough unique differences in the rule set and the ways that you play Eternal that really separates it as its own game. I am talking now in the future. I'm just adding this in really quickly because I've been playing this game since I started making this video and I've become slightly addicted. I even did the one thing I told you guys not to do when I spent a little bit of money on it. And I'm really enjoying the game. It is a lot like Hearthstone, like I said, but I actually prefer the way this game plays. For a fully free-to-play card game I'd never heard of before, Eternal the Card Game is great. A free-to-play Kirby game? Now look, I know a lot of you have been having a ton of fun with Kirby Forgotten Land, but that costs money. <laughs> There's a free one, you know? It's not great, but it's free. <laughs> Super Kirby Clash, it is actually fun, but it's just boss battles. It's boss battles after boss battles. I'm not doing a good job at selling it. I mean, it has the music, it has the flair, the sound effects. It's a classic Kirby game where you can either play offline with bots who actually do a pretty good job at helping you or online with real players who do a much better job at helping you take down boss battle after boss battle. And the more you progress through these boss battles, the harder they become. So that's where you have to start upgrading yourself. There are different classes like swords, magic, and hammers. Each play their own role and have their own abilities and attacks. And you can upgrade the gear that you get for each of those classes. You upgrade that gear in a couple different ways. One, by playing. And the game is pretty lenient for a free-to-play game and giving you all the gems and apples you need to upgrade your equipment. Or, of course, you can just do it quicker. With a game like this, where it's not competitive, you're actually getting help from people or helping people yourself. I don't think there's anything too wrong on if someone wants to speed up the process, especially if they're going to come into my game and start helping me. But that said, I just wouldn't spend any money in this game if I was you, and it's nice that you don't really have to. So if wailing on a bunch of classic Kirby enemies with a few of your friends sounds like a good time, Super Kirby Clash. From cute, cuddly Kirby to taking cover behind the nearest wall and shooting at your enemies, uh, cover fire. This one's interesting because it's a free-to-play offline game. Cover Fire is an on-rails shooter style game where each level has you on rails shooting at a bunch of different enemies. As you progress through the game, you'll unlock a bunch of other characters that will then unlock their own levels, like a sniper level or a rocket launcher level. It doesn't look too bad. It reminds me of an old 360 game. And at its core, it's actually a little bit fun. The only thing that frustrates me are the levels are so insanely short. They feel about 20 seconds long before you move on of the next one. And while there is a ton of levels, you run out of energy to play the levels eventually, and then you gotta take a break and come back and play again later. Also, it's constantly wanting you to upgrade yourself to become stronger, and it will increase the difficulty quickly if you don't. It is strangely satisfying to play, especially the final shot of a round, which goes slow-mo and tracks the bullet through the enemy's skull. And I appreciate that it's trying to create an offline experience for free. So again, even even if you wanted to pump a ton of money into it, you're just really doing it because I guess you're having a good time. That said, if you're looking for something free to play to crush some time, that's well, great for that. I knew I wanted to put Pokemon Unite in this video because it's a chance to talk about it again since this video. When Pokemon Unite launched, it was very pay to win. Now it's only kinda. Pay to win. This was a point of contention on my channel, as many people didn't see the game as pay to win. I still don't see how you couldn't not see it as pay to win. You could equip three items to a Pokemon before you head into battle, and you can level those items up, and the more you level them up, the better bonuses you get. So yes, obviously, if you level up something like health, you're gonna have more health, and you're gonna be stronger on the battlefield. That is pay to win. Tencent and the Pokemon Company saw this problem and made this a a lot more affordable. So now it doesn't take over a year to achieve it free in the game and doesn't cost as much to level up to that point. That said, it's still pay to win. That whole thing annoys me because I do really like the game. It's super easy to pick up and play and the only barrier is really learning how a mobile works. You score points by defeating wild Pokemon or enemies and then dunking those points into a goal working towards the final goal at the end. The team that scores the most points wins. I really love the back and forth here in that gameplay. I mean, if you can destroy enemy goals, it pushes their lane back 
further, so they have less safe spaces around the map. The one caveat is Zapdos usually ruins the flow of any battle. In the last two minutes, Zapdos appears, and if you can defeat it, you get double points and free scores, essentially, for a limited amount of time, which can completely sway the trajectory of the battle, and a losing team can win right at the end. But I think for a Pokemon MOBA, this is really what it had to be, and it does have some charm to it. If you've never tried a MOBA, this is a great place to start learning. My biggest piece of advice I can give to new players or people struggling in the game is just don't go feed the enemy with your death. They level up so much when you do that. You're better off doing nothing than that. So just hang back, play safe, and try and play a support role and help the players that might know what they're doing, hopefully. If no one on your team knows what you're doing, you're screwed. <laughs> and that is another 10 free games worth playing on the Switch. Again, I call these videos best because out of the trash that I have to go through and look at, there's a lot of bad free-to-play games, believe me. These are the fun ones that I actually have fun playing, or at least have enough fun that I think someone will enjoy it. One of these days, I do want to go through and create a best of list. I think I might do that by the end of the year with the all-time best free games out of all the ones I've ever reviewed. If you'd like me to do that, let me know down below. It means re-reviewing stuff I've already talked about, but a lot of these games are ever-changing and growing, so I mean, Fortnite is completely different now from when I first talked about it. All right, whatever. I appreciate you guys. Bye.